let's see. This is John. Hey, this is Paul. And this is What If Geeks. And we stopped saying the episode numbers because we keep screwing it up. So <laughs> rather than be professional about it, we'll just take the professional amateur route. This is the and next one. This is, yeah. <laughs> Much like all your uh, upcoming movies you don't know the title to. Right. This is, you don't know what episode this is. So uh, today we were going to talk about uh, the results of the Super Bowl commercials and trailers. The big game. The big yes. game. Yeah. Don't that, sue us. That we didn't watch. <laughs> no, I, I managed to get home. So, yeah, we decided since we didn't have a dog in the fight that we would just take both of our families to uh, Disney. We went to Magic Kingdom. Yep. And we posted that on Facebook, a couple of pictures. Uh, me and Paul riding the poo ride together. That's right. Because yeah, that's the kind that's of shit we do. What we do. <laughs> and we took a poo selfie. We did. <laughs> there you go. So that's all. That's for all of you. <laughs> a poo selfie. That's right. So yeah, so we had a really good time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the kids had a blast. Kids did have a blast. Everybody came out tired. Uh, but got home and still managed to see some of the big game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I managed like a little bit of it and... I don't know. I've heard complaints about it. I mean, yeah, we don't do much sports in this show, but uh, I guess it was a, a really big defense game. Yeah. yeah um, it was 3-3 until the fourth quarter or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. and then Brady pulled one out. Yeah. And, 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 hey, you know, congratulations. Good for him. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't really believe that. I'm a Steelers fan, so not good for him. But what, what are you going to do? I mean, look, I'm a Giants fan, so, yeah. We put them in their place a couple times, so um, I'm happy about that. That's all I care about. That's right. Did manage to see a couple commercials, um, but then had to go back and watch them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I was saving it. It was funny, too. I was uh, saving it for yesterday to watch it with Heather. She was like, well, I want to watch them with you. I said, okay, so you know, I'll save everything. I, mean, I happened to watch the Avengers trailer because we saw it while we were running around Disney, so yeah. I had to watch it that night so I could post it on Facebook. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. That'll be the last one we'll talk about. But uh, she wanted to watch the commercials because that's kind of what, what both of us was, were interested in on, at this year. And last night, she had an impromptu other visit to Disney. They went to Hollywood Studios, her and the kids. So I just stayed at home and show prepped. And I was like, whatever. So I am just I waited again. And right, I just watched true. like a few that I knew I wanted to talk about that I knew would come out. Yeah. And I, so I still, like, I still have it recorded on my DVR. It's great. So, three hours of stuff I'm not going to watch. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, all right. Um, out of the, well, okay, you know, as always, let's uh, talk Florida, man. Now that the weather's warming up. They're, Florida, uh, man. They're getting out there again. The worst superhero ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, if his superpowers to make me laugh, then he's good. Yes. All right. So, let me see here. Which one do I got? Right, for those of you who aren't from Florida, uh, we know that most of the crazy in the world happens here in Florida, and there is a particular sort of subgenre of crazy story that usually involves Florida man, um, and sometimes his alter ego, Florida woman, uh, as we talked about last time, the the woman at the truck stop uh, who got her five dollars stolen from her um, after performing a service for a kind gentleman um, who decided to take the money back and shoot her. Uh, so, anyway, these uh, these kinds of stories just crack us up. And so, what do you got in terms of Florida Man? All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give them both of you just because it's interesting. Uh, the first one is a man tells deputy he was speeding because he was thirsty for a Pepsi. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Sebastian Florida, uh, a Brevard County guy, got pulled over for speeding, right? And he was doing 80 and they pulled him over, and he said it was because he was thirsty he wanted Pepsi. Now, the funny part about this is, I hit the read more so I get the county right. After they, uh, they stopped him and cited him for speeding there, they realized, oh, wait, you just got stopped an hour ago over in Melbourne for speeding. So, <laughs> so he had to learn a lesson. Right. And apparently in the hour between Melbourne and Sebastian – he couldn't find one Pepsi. <laughs> no one place to get a Pepsi. <laughs> one Pepsi. So switch, switch to Coke. <laughs> Coca Cola. Right, right. Co- Coca Cola. Don't, <laughs> don't do Coke. Uh, the other That's one awesome. is, even though we don't ever do politics here, apparently, uh, two years ago, it's it's hitting the news now because it's just coming out. But um, I guess a new uh, this guy 
is a Florida candidate for Senate, and he just got exposed for something that he did two years ago. Uh, let's see, two years ago, Augustus Saul, Saul Invictus. Invictus. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. 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 Walk. Uh, <laughs> Walked from Central Florida to the Mojave Desert and spent a week fasting and praying. <laughs> in a pagan ritual to give thanks, when he returned home, he killed a goat and drank its blood. Yep. Okay. So, oh, so you knew about this guy. Yeah. I, yeah, he, I, he ran for about the United him. States Senate, and I don't know what his real name is, but he came back saying his name was Augustus Saul Invictus. And, yes, he sacrificed a goat or yes. something like that. Yes, yeah. it's a goat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see, I didn't know that wasn't his real name. I, uh, that was as far into that article as I got because I was like, with a name like Augustus Soul Invictus, yeah, you you believe it. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. Yeah, um, I got one. Uh, I I don't know if this trend is going to be that I'm going to find the Florida woman stories. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, but I've got Florida woman arrested for throwing frozen pork chop at boyfriend <laughs> out of Brooksville. A Brooksville woman was arrested over the weekend after deputies say she hit her boyfriend with a frozen pork chop. Pasco County deputies say the incident involving 48-year-old, I suppose I can read her name, it's on the internet, Jennifer Brassard, happened Friday night in Brooksville. Uh, She got into an argument around 9.45 in their home. At some point during the argument, deputies say Brassard threw a frozen pork chop at him. The pork chop hit the man on his eyebrow and caused a half-inch laceration, the arrest report says. (laughs) I guess it was bone in. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this right. woman, I, she looks. Ooh. Yeah, she's oh, rough. Yeah, you know, she's rough gonna, looking. We're posting that to Facebook. She is later. rough looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she looks like she got hit with a bag of hot nickels. Y- yeah. <laughs> Not just a frozen pork chop, but she's got a black. She got what looks like two black eyes in this picture, um, and a busted up lip. So I'm thinking. He told her twice. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> When we get boycotted, that was not me. I do, I do not advocate that kind of shit. It's just funny. Oh God! In fact, you know what? If you do, if you beat your wife, I'll come whoop your ass yes. for you. Oh my God! Oh man! I have no filter. <laughs> Even That's the, why we do this. the only filter I have is the pop filter. That's why we do this? Yeah. There you go. You're welcome. Good times. <laughs> You cannot leave a pause and <laughs> no, not you expect can't. me to jump in there with something. All right. <laughs> so now that we got to move on from that right. quickly. Uh, all right, let's go on to the commercials and the trailers. Yeah, let's do it. So what uh, – well, I want to save do... that last commercial that I just showed you for – Yeah, if that's If you have best. any other commercials. Uh, I saw a couple that – oh, one that's getting a lot of heat is the, uh, the Hyundai commercial. The – you didn't see this one? Probably. Let's see. Um. Oh, what the hell is the guy's name? Kirk. No, not Kirk Cameron. Holy shit. Ooh, no. The actor from um, Growing Pains. Is right. Jason Bateman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's the yeah. elevator guy. Yeah. Right? And I he's like that taking one. people through the... Uh-huh. Yeah, well, apparently all the vegans lost their shit over the beet loaf. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. They're all mad about oh, that. Oh, vegans. Uh, please. No. <laughs> Look, I related to a couple of vegans, and I love you guys, but I, if you can't laugh at yourself, I mean, look. We laugh at ourselves all the time. Right, you correct. Know, I do stupid shit all the time. Um, it was a joke. Tof- Tofurky is not a thing. Beatloaf is not a thing. I get you don't want to eat meat, but that's fine. But yeah, have a sense of humor about no one likes your food. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so that one catching a lot of heat. I thought it was funny. I liked yeah, it a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, good. What do you got? So there's a couple. I, I'm going to show my age because there's two two rappers I didn't recognize. in the uh, The one in the commercial with the Backstreet Boys. The, the Doritos commercial, I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm an old man. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then in the uh, the one for Expensify, which I guess is a website that allows you to upload your receipts easily. I think I missed that one. There's a, they do a whole video, um, and in the video, there's actually a contest. Like if you snap a picture of the receipt, you can enter on their website and do a thing, and you can get that, you can win that amount of whatever that receipt was for. Mm-hmm. Um there's a rat, and I didn't know who that was either. And I'm like, I'm so old. Yeah, well, well, you know, it's in our title. Yeah, it was uh, two old dads. I mean, um, <laughs> two middle aged dads talking about it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah hey, it is um, what it is. We admit it. I really liked the um, the Amazon commercial with Harrison Ford. 
That one was funny. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. And I was like, how did they get Harrison Ford to do that commercial? Uh, you know, because you get to a point where if you're like him, you don't really need the money. Right. But you can afford to laugh at yourself. Vegans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to you, vegans. So, yeah. So, it, it, yeah, that one was funny. Just just. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> the dog ordering the That was awesome. That was uh, I like the close talker, the Colgate one. That was good. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. Uh, oh, Devour, the frozen food, frozen food porn. No, I missed that one. That, that, I'll have to so watch that one later. I saw it on, on YouTube. There was some <clears throat> controversy because I, I, they, I don't know if they scrubbed out the word porn um, in the commercial, but. Uh, but yeah, she's okay, like family friendly. The, the woman's like, my husband has an addiction. He's into, f-, and so he's like, really playing up the food thing, and he's like hiding the the frozen food wrappers. And <laughs> she comes home to find like napkins laying all over the place, and he gets caught. <laughs> blah, blah blah. And then they're like, now we make amateur frozen food videos, and he's eating it. And she's like, oh, that's so hot. <laughs> that was pretty oh, funny. That's good. I gotta watch that one. Right, um, yeah, I miss that one. Fabrice commercial with Tio is pretty funny. Uh, yeah. You knew who that was. <laughs> yes, I did know. That's because he's not a rapper. He's a football player. Just if it was T.I., I wouldn't yeah, have known who it was. Yeah, there you go. See? Um, <laughs> the NFL commercial with all the – when, like, Peyton Manning throws it. Yeah, okay. all the – Yeah. Cause, yeah, because I saw the article, too. It was like, how the hell did they get all these guys yeah. in these commercials? Again. Joe Montana's about to throw, and then Dion intercepts it. And they have, Yeah, they have the whole thing, and, and uh, Barry Sanders is in it. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, you know, when you get – Enough guys that are in on the joke or, you know, that's the fun part about yeah. it. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. When they're, okay, they're doing it more for the creativity, not for, the, you know, you can afford to do that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and Peyton Manning throws it, and they're like, uh, but he's like, oh, my shoulder hurts. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. great. Yep. Um, it was pretty good. They weren't overly political. Um, I know, like, a couple years ago, all companies were trying to be like, we're part of the resistance or we're super yeah. woke or, you know, well, just Gillette, trying to, Gillette just did that. It backfired a right. lot. <laughs> just, just trying to do that. Like, Hey, we're sort of vaguely political too. Um, but this, uh, this didn't seem that there was, I think the Coca-Cola commercial was the only one that's like, we might look different, but we all like sugary drinks and right. Yeah. yeah, some shit, yeah. Um, well, which is fine. <laughs> like, okay. I, that, I don't remember that one, but I can get behind that kind of message. Like, I hey, look, you know, we're all the same. Uh, right. We, Again, like we talked about before, if you're not trying to shove it down my throat, I can listen to your message. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's a, there's an art to it. You know, the, uh, you can do a subtle message. Or it doesn't even have to be very subtle, but it doesn't have to be like you're beating someone over the head with a message. Yeah. And it, it comes out fine, and people appreciate it more. Otherwise, you get all the backlash, like Gillette and whatever else, right. and people lose their shit. So yeah, but now, uh, did you have anything else? No, just the um, the one with uh, Jeff Bridges where he's the dude from Big Lebowski, oh, yeah, and uh, Carrie from from Sex and the City. Sex and the City. That was yeah, pretty good. Commercial. That was great. She looked good. <laughs> that was the first thing I saw. She kept walking <laughs> on the screen. I was like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> you know, sometimes she's hit or miss, and then uh, yeah, she, no, okay, she looked good. Yep. And then uh, the best commercial, hands down, oh. wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, the Bud Light. Nope. Nope. You think it's Bud Light. Yep. <laughs> that was so great. They do the whole Bud Light thing, you know, the Bud Light man or the Bud Light night and the dilly dilly and all that shit. They set him all up to joust. Yep. And he, hold my he beer. Hold, hold my other beer. Yeah. Wait, one more. He's got three beers. It was it, uh, it was set up so well that you don't see it coming. And I only saw it coming right at, right at the that the impact point. He goes to joust, and he gets knocked on his ass, and dude stands over him, because you never see his opponent until he stands over him, and it's the mountain from Game of Thrones. Yep. And he, stand, he does the whole thing from the show. Won't spoil anything for you guys, but there's a key scene in the show. The mountain reenacts it on the Bud Light night, so you know what's happening there. And then one of the dragons comes flying through, and the theme song kicks in, and Everybody goes running in terror, and they light the whole fucking place on fire. Yep. And it just says Game of Thrones, April 2019, whatever. And it was just so epic. You know, it was like one of those – it's one of those times where they hit you from out of nowhere, and you're just floored, and you're like, this was perfect. Yep. It was a perfect commercial. 
advertisement for uh, Game of Thrones. Slipped in a good Bud Light commercial that turned into a really good Game of Thrones spot. Yeah. For HBO. Yeah. And yeah. my favorite part outside of the surprise of what it was was that last shot of the Bud Knight. Uh, the Bud, yeah, the Bud Knight laying on the ground, yep. and he looks like a crushed beer can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfect. So yeah, that was my favorite commercial, and I gotta say it's probably one of my favorite ones going back for a while now. Yeah, it, it's a good one. Um, it's like right up there with that Doritos one with the uh, dude's dog sitting like we were talking uh-huh. before, and he's like, "Get me a bear," yeah. and the dog brings back a fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> Again, don't leave a pregnant pause in there. That shit don't happen. So we'll move on to trailers, and let's see. I, I, I've i got three written down. Did you have any other ones that I don't have? Uh, let's see. The ones that I like that, that make me want to see the movie. While you're um, talking, I'm going to grab beer. Sure. The ones that make me really want to see the movie. Um, I was surprised at Hobbs and Shaw that yes. it, it, it made me – that's not a movie that I would – I love action movies. Let me start by saying I love action movies. But I have so little time to go to a movie in the theater that, like, I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious probably since the second one, maybe the third one. Right. Um, and the idea that that something based on that franchise is going to come out, I'm just not going to make it to the theater to see that. It's just not going to happen. Right. Um, yeah, me it, too. It may now that we're doing this and we talk about more movies, I, I actually have some some reason to go. But um, first, we're gonna rob a bank. Yeah, but it looked really good. Like the interplay between Jason Statham and The Rock, just in the, it, just in the in the the trailer itself, I thought was awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, that was well, really cool. When they first announced it, and I was listening to like you know other podcasts talking about it, I was interested in it, but I didn't see the whole Idris Elba thing coming. You know, because I was just figuring, all right, you know, another. Fast and Furious style uh, movie, right? Just a spin off with these two, and it is. But every a few people I've heard after the trailer, um, spoiler alert for the trailer, they've jacked up Idris Elba with some kind of technology and whatever, yeah. and he's got basically superpowers. Right. You know, he's super strong, right. super fast, whatever. You know, uh, some people complain about it. They're like, "Really?" I'm like. That's literally like your next level. Yeah. The last movie, Dwayne Johnson was like drop kicking a fucking torpedo. Right. Of course. I mean, Vin Diesel was f- jumping from one bridge to another, from speeding car to speeding car to save uh, Michelle Rodriguez, right? Letty. And crashes through a windshield. No problem whatsoever. I step out of bed and I fucking hurt myself. Right. Yeah, okay. I pulled a muscle sneezing. So, yeah, of course, it's the next logical step in this series. Go ahead and put full blown superhero shit in there. Right. I hope they jack up uh, Hobbs and Shaw <laughs> with this technology too. I hope that's like after he whoops their ass the first time, they come back all teched out. That'd be great. This fuck full blown rock yeah. flying through the fucking air, whatever. I don't care. It'd be great. But yeah, it, it, that trailer I, it caught me like, okay, I'm ready to watch this. Yeah. I was kind of rolling my eyes at first when they were first talking about it, but then I was like, you know what? It's the entire series has become like the first movie was good for what it was, yeah, right? Right, that cop, gritty, whatever. Yeah, and then the Paul it, Walker ones way back in yeah, the day, yeah, yeah, like f- from the very first one. The second one was decent, mm-hmm. Tokyo Drift was all right, and then then that's when you started to it started to die off, and then it started to change too, right? And then went full tilt, like we know what we are, we know you just want to see crazy ass shit, you don't care if we're defying the laws of physics, correct? So or that this this car chase is supposed to happen on a runway. Meanwhile, in real life, right. it would take sixty miles of to do all the driving. To do everything they yeah. did, yeah, exactly, right. yeah. So they they just don't care, right? Like, all right, you don't care, we don't care. Grab your popcorn, shut the fuck up, <laughs> right? And that's what they did. And this is just the next. So now that we're at that point, I'm like ready for anything they do because now that I know what I'm in, you know, I'm like, all right, fuck it, this is gonna be fun, right? Now you've got full blown superhero geek shit. So this is right in our wheelhouse now. You got superhero tech, whatever the hell we need, Idris is going to be breaking shit now. We need just enough story to be able to stitch together these really <laughs> long action sequences and fights. Yeah. And and you kind of don't care actually what the story stitched together looks like. No. No, it yeah. could be a Frankenstein mess. It's fine. It's like the Expendables. 
The Expendables was like, let's get every action star that you know and love, and then let's come up with some just whatever story to get them in a fight. Yeah. We just need them to fight. Sort of don't care how it happens. They nope. just need to fight. Nope. All right. There's some kind of cartel or whatever over here. Somebody's daughter's kidnapped over there yeah, or whatever. Sure. sure. Go. Yeah. And then everybody and their mother is blowing shit up. Mm-hmm. And some of them are only in there for a second. Like the Chuck Norris thing. Yeah. Just as they're going through that town, he just shows up, snipes somebody out. The little uh, the lone the lone star or whatever whistle kind of shit blows and he just walks off. Yeah. Good seeing you guys. <laughs> and he just leaves. Like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. But, they, yeah, but again, there's something about that that speaks to probably guys like us. Just dumb shit. Mm-hmm. That, okay, just give me a bucket of popcorn and just let me shove it in my face and watch this shit and lose myself for a little while and just blow some shit up. Yeah. And they do. Which is why I'm looking forward to Ramble 5. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming too. Yeah. I just don't get out enough for those. Um, I don't take the time to go see those as often as I used to, um, but I'm going to need to start. Well, if we keep pushing this as hard as we can, yeah. we can maybe become like movie pundits and there then we, we can get screeners. That'd be fun. <laughs> then we have to watch them. That'd right. be great. So, yeah. So there was that. Um, let's see what we did. What so, did you like? Uh, the Toy Story 4. Yeah. Uh, all right. On the one hand, I didn't need a fourth one. The third one was nice. I like the idea of them going back to these characters, especially since they did it with like uh, the little shorts and stuff. You know, like you had like the uh, the Toy Story Halloween yep. and the, all these other ones, right? They could have kept on doing that and made a whole show for kids, you know, and I would have been fine with that. I'd have watched them just because I like the characters, right? When they said four, I was like, as far as a movie goes, you didn't need a fourth one because that third one was perfect. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wrapped that whole trilogy. And it's one of those things where when you do a trilogy, can you stick the landing at the end? And they nailed it. Right. You usually don't. You risk screwing it up. Yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, when you actually do have a trilogy that can do it, you really risk screwing something up when you go for, get you know, you're going back to the well. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> at the flip side, okay, it's Toy Story 4. Do I want to see what's going on? Sure. Mm-hmm. The first little commercial where it just showed them kind of dancing around, whatever, and you see Forky, I, that was cute. Then uh, this one where they just, they're looking for Buzz. And yep. He's, you know, he's at the carnival. The carnival right, right. And Ducky and Bunny yeah. show back up. Because that one, did the, you saw the other one with those two guys, right? When they were sitting there, just they were on the shelf talking. And yeah. They, they were talking about, like, you hear them making a Toy Story 4, whatever, like, you know, to infinity and your mom. Yeah. And all that <laughs> right. Had me rolling. So they just go and play on that. To infinity one, in my foot. Yeah, yeah, he kicks him a couple times, and yeah. Buzz finally just gives him that look and catches him in the helmet. Yeah. That shit had me rolling. And I was like, all right, you know what? Please don't screw it up. <laughs> but, but I'm in. I, I really liked it. I agree. What did you think? I agree. Yeah, um, it, it had all the right stuff. It had um, – I've forgotten how much I like those characters. Yeah. Um, and you forget how sort of really good the first one is – and there's, you probably know this because you're a big Disney guy. The first time I've read the story about kind of the making of that first movie, and and they had to change a lot of it because Woody just came off as like an entitled dick. Yeah. Um. And and so they had to soften him a little and kind of redo mm-hmm. it. Um. But it becomes this really cool buddy movie. Yeah. Um. And and, and just the interplay between the two of them is really great. Um. And, and you just forget how. Good, that one made you feel. And so when you see those characters, you're like, those are just good movies. And yeah. like, kids like them. And yep. yeah, so everything about it's good. Yeah, um, and all that stuff about him being an entitled dick is on the special stuff, the, the background shit mm-hmm. in the, uh, on the DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. And it's really cool. When you watch it, you're like, holy wow. Yep. They really made a change. And it did. It, it took something where you could have had a character that you didn't like. Right. And hopefully you grew with them to... All right, now he's just a character who's worried about his place, mm-hmm. and, and you can understand that, you know. So, yeah, from one and then two was good. You mm-hmm. know, he's worried about what's going to happen to him, and well, he doesn't need me anymore. I can just stay here, whatever, you know. And then when you get to three, when you get to the end of three, yeah, I straight up was like, wow, they might actually do it, you right. know. Right. And I I got choked up. You know, I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. 
and then you know they you know it, it ends well or whatever and still they hit you right in the heart right one in more the time yeah. you know uh when he gives the the toys to bonnie and uh it's just everything about that was perfect you know so the fourth one as much as i'm looking forward to it they do uh i read an article where and i've tried to avoid anything since then but I read an article that Tom Hanks said that when he closed uh, recording that last day, whatever he said, there's something in that last recording that he did that was so emotional. He actually normally like the, when they're recording, they're like here with us, we're right. with, looking at each other. He turned his back so he didn't have to look at anybody oh, and wow. they couldn't see him. So something in this movie had him that emotionally uh, impacted, oh, wow. you know, that – so I'm like, ah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, don't, I was like, I don't know. Right. I, 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 uh, I think something, something not good is going to happen. I, this I don't need to be in the theater crying about a, over a stuffed, <coughs> yeah, cowboy doll. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so thanks, love you. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. I yeah. can't wait to see it. And that's later, right? Yeah. I don't know when the hell I lost my list. I don't know where when it comes out. It comes out later this year, don't it? Sort of late in the year, I think. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, uh, I'll find it June? sometime. June? What is that? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. June 21st. Okay. Good job. You can read upside down Thanks. more than I can read <laughs> right side up. Dick. <laughs> 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 All right, what else do you got? Or you just got the other two that I got? Yeah, I just got the other two you've got. All right, so we got Captain Marvel. Yeah. Another one. Um, I was already all in on this one. I was too. So you, I'm, whatever. Yep, I'm going to take my money right now. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm good. You, you didn't have to show me anything else. I, I know it was... What what was different about this one? It was cut. It was just cut differently. It was cut differently, and this is the first time I think that they've done the, what is it? Faster, farther, stronger. Yeah, that was it because they kept yeah. that mantra up. And um, now, do the, I have uh, this word? Is that is that what it is? Faster, farther, stronger, or something like yeah, that? Something yeah, something like that. Yeah, faster, farther, stronger, uh, faster, higher, stronger, some shit like yeah. that. Uh, whatever. But it's, it's an Air Force kind right, of thing yeah. too. You know, it's one of those. But they. Uh, they chant that throughout the whole beginning of that thing, and I did. I liked it. It, just, it shows you know she's going to be a badass. And yeah, we're going to see what happens. But they, um, the girl in the beginning with her, her partner, mm-hmm. her her wingman, wing well, wing woman, whatever. Um, she is, and I forget the character's name in the in the comics, but she plays the person who becomes Photon, who's like. Remember the, the right. black Captain Marvel yep. or Miss Miss Marvel? Because mm-hmm. this is the first Captain Marvel. Right. That. It, she was because uh, Carol Danvers was Miss Marvel, and then Rogue got her in the comics, and then this other woman became Miss Marvel, and then she became Photon when Carol Danvers came back or whatever, and then she suddenly became Captain Marvel or some shit. Haven't kept up with all of that shit, but that is the character who's going to be photon at some point if they do it yeah i was gonna say do you think they're going to do it in this movie or is it enough that they've got probably just they have to introduce all the kree and scrolls and all that stuff yeah. and yeah there's a lot yeah going on. something else would probably like you know either in a sequel or whatever she might get it and then carol's gonna to, gotta help her we're gonna have to figure out how nick fury loses his eye <clears throat> yeah yeah well that's yeah that's definitely in this movie obviously in fact in the first trailer there is a scene where it looks like they got the scroll on the uh the gurney in the morgue or whatever, and he looks like he's holding his eye. That was all right. So I think it's in the fight with the scroll that he's going to lose it. So yeah, it, it's like a it's a quick shot, yep. but yeah, um, that's all I got on that one. I mean, I'm like I said, you already got me on. You got my money on that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. The um, the Birds of Prey trailer was pretty good. The teaser, uh, yeah, the looked, real quick know, Margot Robbie shot, and then the very quick looks at everybody else. It was too fast to kind of. Yeah, you'd have are. to like freeze frame it yeah. and go through it. But yeah, you see, you know, Black Canary and all that. Huntress, Black Huntress. Canary, yeah. And you know, hey, you got me. Yep. You have a bunch of women running around fighting crime. I watch it. And Margot Robbie back as uh, Harley. Yeah. I'm, I'm always gonna watch that. I'm in. Yep. So yeah, so that one's good. I like that one. And then uh oh, going back to Captain Marvel. Only because I know this through ancillary ancillary yeah, that word reading throughout the different comics and whatever and articles the cat that you see in the trailer keep an eye on that thing in the movie oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's not just a regular cat yeah yeah I, th- I think we touched on that before but yeah and i, I heard that they definitely make sure you know right. <laughs> so yeah something something's gonna happen there so 
So yeah, uh, watch the cat. Guys. What is that watch next? Is that March next month? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's March, and then uh, yep, right there. Oh, nice. March eighth. Okay, cool. It's coming around the corner. Yeah, there you go. Speaking of which, by the way, didn't fucking January go by fast? Holy shit. I know, right? I'm getting old. It's February already. Yeah. It's like, I literally just told my kids, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas, and now it's February. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So, last trailer that I got, or we both got, was, they, and they brought it out early. Yeah. When we were at Disney, we saw the articles for it, and I saw the article, Avengers Endgame trailer drops early and already wins the Super Bowl. Right. I was like, of course it did. What are you, nuts? And again, they don't show you shit. Right. Nothing. Nope. But there is one shot in there. Now, okay, you do see uh, Cap looking clean again. So is that past Cap? Is it just Cap with a haircut? Whatever, you know. I think it's past Cap. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's like the Cap with no beard. Right. You do see him with a beard in like one of the other ones, so... Yeah, he's got a beard in uh, in the first in uh, Infinity War. In Infinity War, yeah. he's got the beard, but I think in the first teaser trailer, one shot shows him with a beard, one shot shows him without. Oh, it. interesting. So I think I don't know. Oh, he's so sad he has to shave. Well, no, 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 because there's time travel involved here. Yeah. So right, right. right. They're going to be bouncing around. So I yeah. think you know at least one shot. I just thought, like, what if the current Cap dies and. They pick up because uh, then they f- they finish the rest of the movie with him as with the younger cat. You yeah, know. time travel cat. Then he's yeah. Then he's further in time. Uh, whatever. Okay, I just hurt my head. Well, <laughs> at some point in the end of the trailer, you see him tighten the strap on his shield. Yeah, not yeah. the so he not gets... the Wakandan sort of laser shield. Right. Original. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not the the magnetized one that Tony Stark updated where he can. Right. Call it back to yep. himself. It's got the strap. It's yeah. got the strap that he puts on. So he's, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, something's happening there. But there's that shot in the hangar when they're walking. Because mm-hmm. right? he's like, you know, some people move on. We don't. Right. And then you see them walking through the trail, uh, the hangar there, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever that warehouse thing is. It looks, at first I thought it, they were at the airport. And then then I see the Avengers thing in the background. Right. Yeah, so it's their compound. The yeah. So it looks like they're walking through their hangar or whatever, right? Yeah. But I saw a, a shot of that. And there is a spot, I think it's in between Ant-Man and War Machine or Ant-Man, which how War Machine is in there when, no, he didn't evaporate. Never mind. Yeah, he didn't get yeah, dusted. Okay, he didn't get dusted. I, kept, I keep thinking he got dusted. Um, there's a spot, there's a space that's too big. <laughs> so, I, was, I have to watch yeah, it again. Uh-huh, yeah, so I think that's like, I think Iron Man is, I, that's after he comes back or whatever. Because you see him in Nebula. Working right, right. You know, she, you know, you see the two of them. I bet he records the shit, and then that's them working to try to like a last ditch effort to get out of there. Yeah, who the hell knows? I liked how they did the the sky shots after what do they call it? The decimation, or like City Field and others. And then there's that poster yeah. like, what do we do now that they're People gone? Are gone. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, that that idea that, and then uh, I think it's Black Widow looks at him and she's like. This has this is gonna work, and he goes. It has to because I don't know what I'm gonna do if they don't. Well, that was the, that was the first teaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's in I, this I one too. It, it is okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that one looks really cool too. Uh, there was a few shots in there where people were like, "Oh, you know, is it time travel?" Because in one shot she looks one way, and then in another shot her hair looks different or whatever. And I'm like, "Well, yeah. There's a lot. There's gonna be running back and forth right. in this movie. I think they're gonna be hopping around a lot." Now there's a shot of Thor with Stormbreaker, and he's walking through what looks like a cave. Right. You remember that one? Mm-hmm. That looks just like Titan. Is that right? If you think back to Avengers: Infinity War, when Thanos does a snap, yeah, and then everyone goes away, whatever, and then he goes and he sits and watches the sunrise. Right. I got to go back and watch. Because it looks like the same mountain, I think Thor is going to track his ass down. Oh, funny! Yeah, I uh, I'm gonna have to watch. So, pause this conversation. Just so I I got my wife to watch Black Panther this weekend. Oh, cool! This past weekend, uh, Saturday night, and and I was she hadn't seen it. Uh, she's mildly into this stuff, but not not as much clearly as me and you. Um, <laughs> 
So we watched it, and she really liked it. But one of the things when I got to the end, I, I didn't – I sort of thought this when I first saw it, but it, the point was driven home to me a little bit more in this. If you think about the end of Black Panther and the end of Infinity War, you get to the end of Black Panther, and Killmonger has been waiting his whole life to get revenge on T'Challa and, and Wakanda and do the whole thing. And they have this fight. He goes through, right, all the stuff, all the training – he, they're in the fight. He gets stabbed, and he just sort of quits, right? I mean, yeah. okay, I get it. Right? He, <laughs> yeah. You got stabbed. He just got he's got run through by a big ass knife, and right, I get that part. Except that he doesn't like in in the ritual combat to to become king. He doesn't stop, right? He, right. He's destroying T'Challa. Right? Stabs him through, cuts him in the like, cuts his leg, cuts the part of his arm so he can't hold his weapon. Like. Yep. He's decimating him, throws him off the thing. Um, he's in the fight with uh, uh, the 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 guards. Um, you know, uh, what are the, the the women with the shaved heads? Yeah, his, yeah, his yeah. I can't remember. The yeah, name. I can't remember the name. And anyway, so he's with them. And Koye, he, I remember the Koye. Yeah, right. And he kills <laughs> the one, right? And then they're just gonna sit and watch the sunset. And you're like, why isn't he still like with every ounce of his being trying to do whatever he can? To, to claw his eyeballs out. Right, yeah. You get to the end of Infinity War, and Thanos has all the gems, right? He's got the glove. Thor sort of crushes him with the with the lightning blast, the thing, but he gets up and he's like, should have gone for the head, <laughs> right? Like, he doesn't yeah. stop. And, and so I just thought it's funny to watch how they did the ending. Black Panther, an amazing movie. But that one part at the end, you're like, why is he not still fighting? Why, why did right. he just sort of give up? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never stabbed in the chest, so <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I have, t- I'd have to think and take the fight out of you, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I get your point, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never, you know, never say I won't shit all over your point. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I totally get your point, but yeah, I, I don't know. That's that my is... my, oh, and, and again, I had to see it a second time to to get that reaction. But I'm like, he should stop. Probably still be fighting. Yeah, yeah, you would have thought. Yeah. At least he would have fought until like he fell off the damn mountain or something. Right, right, right. Because I'm sure in all of the right, they they say that he he went to Annapolis. He was a SEAL. He was special forces, a ghost unit, all that stuff. At some point, he would have been under extreme duress and not finish. You know, yeah, had to finish a mission with one arm and you know. Yeah, you would have thought. Yeah. But... but they needed the movie to end. It, it yeah. had gone on. <laughs> yeah, he had to stop fighting because they hit two hours and thirty minutes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, now the Thanos thing. Uh, so now I got it. Now I have to get her to see um, Infinity War. That's next. Damn. <laughs> you gonna try that before Captain Marvel? Yeah. Or are you coming with me and Noah? <laughs> I'm probably coming with you and Noah. <laughs> yeah. But I still need to get Heather to see that. All right, because you know Heather will go watch all these movies with me. She likes them. Yeah. So yeah. <sighs> Poor Gail. She just doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm I'm really looking forward to that movie. I cannot wait for that. I, I'm still holding strong to my theory that I think Cap and Tony are going to die at the end. I'm just going to throw that out there because I just think it's going to be... It would be clean. Yeah. And it would be a good send-off for them mm-hmm. and a good um, passing of the torch to the new crowd. Yep. You know, And it's a perfect solution to Civil War, Infinity War, and then they make up to battle Thanos, like, yeah. hey, look, yo, let's bury this shit and attack this threat that's bigger than both of us. We right. can't do this. And I really do think they're going to do, like, something where Tony's going to be fighting Thanos and he's going to be losing, even though, like, I think he's going to build some type of armor that can control or help control Infinity Gems and they're either going to get their own or whatever. Something's going to happen with alternate realities or some shit. Yeah. But he's going to be fighting, like, with some kind of god armor or something and it's still not going to be enough. And I think Cap's going to jump in there with him. And he's probably going to – I would say I would bet safe money that he'll drop that I'm with you to, till the end of the line. You know, that right. line. He's going to drop that on Tony, and then they're going to die. You know. But, hey, you know. Yeah, go out like heroes. Yeah. But, you know, I, I've been wrong before, so, hey, what the <laughs> fuck do I know? I'll bet my money. Don't bet your money on what I say. Right. So that was that one. <clears throat> then, right after that, uh, we found out that uh, – they're going ahead. Was it Matt Reeves is going to direct 
the Batman yes. for 2021. And Ben Affleck is out. Yeah, so, that, when did that news come out? Friday or Saturday? Yeah, it came, like out, came out like right before we were getting ready to head out to mm-hmm. uh, Disney. So we were like, well, you know, let's while, while we were at Disney, we said, hey, you know, the last part of this show, maybe we'll talk about who we think should be Batman. Yeah. So you want to do, what did you think of Ben Affleck as Batman? Let's let's do that. Did okay. We have have we had this conversation? <clears throat> In passing. Okay. Yeah, but since we're on the actual subject of it, I liked Affleck. Uh, he was believable to me as both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Mm-hmm. I don't like what Zack Snyder did with the character. That is, there's a big difference there. Had he been written a little bit differently, <clears throat> had they maybe not played him as getting ready to retire too. I mean, he could have been established right. in there. You know, they didn't have to play him as old as they tried to make him. You know, they made him like he was done already, right. you know. Right. <clears throat> they could have been seasoned. They could have brushed some of the gray out of his hair, you know, whatever. Or or I'm pretty sure every other picture I see of Affleck, he doesn't have that gray. So they put that in there for the movie. So he didn't have to have that, you know what I mean? Right. He Ben Affleck could easily have played him like 10 years younger. Mm-hmm. And done a phenomenal job. I liked him. I wanted to see more of him just in a better universe. (laughs) I I agree. I I think that he was a, he's a really good Bruce Wayne. He's a good Batman. I don't, I I agree with you that I didn't like that they made brand new Superman and old Batman um, together. And, and and we talked about this the other day. I think that the, the way that Marvel set up, the fight between their two big icon heroes made more sense yeah. than the rush job that DC did to get their two giant yeah. big name heroes to fight. Um, and and Marvel takes it further in saying they didn't make up right away, even amidst right. this this major you know thing happening to the universe that that obviously ends in a decimation. Yeah. It's they still don't make up. No. And Batman and Superman make up because their moms happen to have the same first name. Yeah. It's just too too convenient by half. Yeah. Um, so good job, to your point, good job, sort of poor choice of universes. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen – like we've said it time and again, and I know I, I'll i die on this sword, is uh, DC tried to play catch up with Marvel mm-hmm. and they didn't have to. You, you should have taken right. your time and established this. If you would have done <clears throat> one more Man of Steel, you right. know, a yeah. sequel, mm-hmm. throw in a Brainiac, whatever, let him not be as moody, make him be, I, and I get they were trying to do something darker where it wasn't comparable to MCU, whatever, but you, you're you betting on the wrong horse that way. Right. Go ahead and do the light stuff because the fan base is going to Go for it. And the people that aren't the big fans are still going to go for it because you have the heroes that they all know. Right. But they don't know a dark-ass Superman who's, like, snapping Zod's neck and screaming and whatever, you know? Yeah. They don't know that. You know, they know Superman. Mm-hmm. Christopher Reeve. You know, everybody knows who Superman is. Everybody knows Batman's the dark, brooding one, whatever. Right. <clears throat> so if you just do what the people know, they'll come and watch a movie. Right. Okay? So... They screwed it up back then, is in my opinion. If you would have done a lighter Man of Steel, even a little bit. I mean, you could have gone from that first one and then made a, a change in the second one. Well, yes, I, I think in the first... I liked Man of Steel. I think that it hits... Um, watching young Clark Kent sort <clears throat> of have these powers and figure them out like that, I thought was really good. Yeah, no, no, when, I, when I he like can the hear movie. everything and, and it freaks him out. Yeah. And, and So all of that stuff is really good. Yeah, in a sequel, he can sort of figure out how to be the hero, right, that everybody wants. Right. But even, again, like I said, you can go do the entire Man of Steel movie the way it was. I thought it was a touch too dark. But you can do that if you take that second movie to mold him back into, like, right. okay, I understand you're just learning your power. You're not really good at the Superman thing yet. So the only way you see to save these people is to kill Zod. Go ahead. You know, I mean, in most of everything we've ever read, Superman doesn't kill, okay? And most people understand Superman always finds a way out, yada, yada. But as a human being, I can understand that. If you want to ground it a little more in reality, whatever, I get that. Now you take the second one and you 
turn it yep. so that he becomes the bright blue smiling that they tried to do in the last 10 minutes of Justice League. You know, that should have been Man of Steel. Yeah. He should have, they should have never done Batman versus Superman. Right. So now he's not dead, right? Uh, you could have still done a Wonder Woman movie by itself. You could have done little hints like pictures and stuff that Batman mm-hmm. is doing research and he's like, he see, thinks he sees something in a picture that's odd or whatever and he sees Diana, whatever, you know, yep. something like that. You can do touches like that, you know? Uh, but you don't have to do the Justice League movie yet. And then you do a Man of Steel 2, and you do the Batman. Right. Not <laughs> retired Batman or almost retired Batman. You do the Batman yeah. about 10, 15 years prior to where you see him in uh, Batman vs. Superman. And, do it then. And if you think about – and I, I guess I have to go back and watch Batman vs. Superman again. But I don't, I don't remember how much time supposedly passes between w- – Man of Man Steel, Steel start Batman versus Superman starts at the end of Man of Steel when when he knocks into one of Wayne's buildings and kills a bunch of his people. Right, because you see that, yeah. Right, but I'm not sure how much time passes in, in that in that universe between that and then they start to fight. Because by the end of the movie, suddenly the world is in love with Superman, who, if you piece everything together, hasn't been here that long. Right. Yes, he hasn't established himself as this amazing hero. Right in the comics, when Superman dies, that that famous thing that happens in the nineties. But there had already been forty, fifty years of Superman, right? Right, yeah. being a hero, and in the in the continuity of the comics, could Correct. might have been like five years or whatever, or not even or five, ten years, whatever it was. Yeah, but he's been there. Right, they know him as a hero, and every right, everybody knew. So every everybody on Earth had been saved at least once by Superman in in that continuity. Yeah. He had saved the world dozens of literally dozens of times. Yeah, um, every other hero is is at the funeral. That's why he had a monument built to him and all the stuff. In that in that movie universe, he'd not been around long enough. No, he's been there for five minutes. Right to, <laughs> yeah. to have all this stuff yeah. to him. And, that was and so, my biggest problem with it too. Right, yeah. all of that seemed too forced. Yeah, yeah. And to your point of like him. Being viewed as the hero that saves everybody, there's a joke in like the Lego uh, universe where they do all like the Lego DC stuff, where Batman and Robin are running around doing something, and they get like knocked off the side of a building and they're hanging there, and Batman is like getting ready to try to get them out of there, and Robin's like, "Oh no, it's okay, I got it. Watch this. Hey, Superman!" And he here, do do do, and he comes flying in, yeah. and Batman's like, "Stop that!" <laughs> and they do it like three times in the movie, so it's funny. You know, it, it, because that's what he is. Right. He's like, he, okay, no problem. Yep. You know? But, yeah, they just did, they didn't give it enough time to establish the damn characters. Right. So then you have Batman vs. Superman and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So the whole thing was a fiasco. And I, I don't know who quit on who in this scenario, but Ben Affleck is out. Yeah. Right? So we'll, we'll just skip to this because now you, all right, you've got Wonder Woman did great. Aquaman nailed it, knocked it out of the park. Yep. And again, I just I didn't see that one coming. I thought it was going to be good because you know the, the little bits that you did see of him in like Justice League and, and whatever. Yeah, not the little bits. I mean, you saw a decent amount of him, but like the little bits that you you got to know Jason Momoa as opposed to like any other hero. Like right. Wonder Woman had her own movie. It had me like, okay, this is going to be a fun movie, and they really did a good job. Yeah. I mean, a billion dollars. You get the hell out of here. So, so congratulations, you guys did that one. But now, you get the point where, all right, Batman did not have his own movie. He's already getting ready to retire. Justice League got shit on. I, they, and again, we've we've spoken before. There were some parts in it that we liked, mm-hmm. but you know, again, certain scenes, nice, good, but overall, there was a world there that you missed making. Yep, you know, and. So now Ben Affleck either probably got tired of being the punching bag because he was. Uh, I've heard constantly people don't like him, and I'm like, he was fine. Yeah, he was fine. He was great. He was not the problem. Yeah, no. And if you would have put him in a movie that was written well, he would have really shown you what he could do. Yep. There's a little bits that you got out of him was like, okay, that was cool, you know. But uh, I would have loved to have seen it. So, But that's not going to happen. So he's out. Either he quit because he got tired or the studio – Got rid of him because 
they just listened to all the fans and said, well, he's the problem. We're not the problem. Right. <laughs> so, so now the question is, now that Batman, the Batman movie is slated for 2021, I forget what month, like March or some shit, uh, 2021, and supposedly it's going to be more noirish, like the detective side of things. Right. But I've also heard that there's going to be like a rogues gallery. So I'm pretty sure they're not going to touch Joker. Um, so on one hand, before we get into the actors, I want to ask you, if they're going to do a rogues gallery but try to make it detective, who out of his villains do you want to see? So if they're going to make it noir, then I want to see I want to see the, the, the sort of creepier ones. I want to see Zaz. Um, I want to see... You could do a really good Riddler that would send him on on this sort of crazy scavenger has a terrible word for it, right? But he's mm-hmm. got to do this this series of of challenges or, or something, not in a not in a silly way, Aren't but <laughs> not not in a silly way, but but right have, has this this thing that is more challenging to his mind and intellect, and not mm-hmm. necessarily it's just a, a fight. Um, you could throw the Riddler in there. Yep. Maybe Riddler and Penguin working together, kind of thing. Yeah, that that's cool. yeah, that's why I was saying Riddler in a, in a, in a, in a right. Got to think this through, sort of problem. Um, Penguin would be good. Don't do too much of the Danny DeVito kind of, you know, weird play on it. Yeah, um, no, straight up, almost more like what they were doing in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, but I would like to see him. Look a little more of the part, yeah. You know, closer to a heavy set, whatever. Yeah, you know. I mean, right. he could look a little more like Danny DeVito, yeah, but just not the flippers. I mean. In the um, so do like a like a black mask kind of um, real, yeah, uh, very dark crime syndicate um, kind of look to it. You could do. A, you just showed me a picture of Hush, Hush, which would be really yeah. good. I think if you're going to do the detective side of shit, hush, because I, if I remember correctly, that whole – you can even do like the long Halloween. Yeah. Kind of, you know, the Court of Owls. Um, yeah. I think uh, anything else you you need a couple of movies to establish. Right. You know, the storyline. Um, I think this is supposed to be not – because they, they already said – at least I've heard they said, no, it's not Origin. It's not Batman Begins. So – they may quickly touch on it, much like they did in Batman vs Superman, which I was fine with that, with the whole uh, Jeffrey D. Morgan mm-hmm. playing like the flashbacks and yeah. stuff. That was perfect. You showed me real quick. Okay, hey, you didn't dwell on it. You didn't do like all right, Batman eighty nine, and then Batman Begins. Right. Then, like, okay, no, you already know it. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Just like they did with Spider Man. We know. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're done. You can do quick flashbacks. You can do pictures. You can do you know Wayne family shot, whatever you know. Um, you can even do a quick, maybe a two-minute montage of him climbing a mountain to go tra- – you, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, you right. can do all that if you want to establish, all right, this is a new world, whatever. Get the Batman in there. Now he's been there for – I think it's supposed to be he's been there for a couple of years. Right. He's, he's been working for a little while. So the rogues gallery is still set up much like in uh, Batman vs. Superman. But – they're still going to be newer. You're going to start to see them. He doesn't now. have all the trophies. He doesn't have right. the, the giant penny and the thing right, right in the Batcave. Yeah. yeah. So, but I would love to see them do like Riddler, because uh, <laughs> Batman Forever. Uh, sorry, but I mean, it, it was it was fun. Yeah. It was campy, but I want to see like the Riddler be like. The, not the cackling, goof, mm-hmm. right. goofy Jim Carrey. Right, not a but, suit with question marks on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he can still have that because you know, it is still the cartoon movie, but there's a way to make it Correct. to where it's not campy. You know, he can have maybe the green jacket and the question mark cane or whatever because when you start to do that, when you don't have the question marks all over, mm-hmm. you still know who he is because right. he's got that cane or whatever. He can have that, like the staff with the question mark at the end of it, you know, uh, the bowler hat, you know, that kind of shit. He could be dressed in green. The little nods to what it is, but then make it darker. If they go to the Arkham games, right there, look at some of those looks. Yeah, go for that. You know the the 
the Gotham show that the Edward Nigma they're working on through that uh, has been really good. And and he does a little bit of that, but it's not so cartoony and campy as it is in in Batman Forever, as it obviously right. obviously wouldn't be what what it was in the 60s, 60s TV show. And he can even have that like that little giggle that he had in the 60s. I was I keep thinking of that like when he would giggle. Yeah. Whatever. You can even have that, like when he's writing the jokes or whatever. You can do those nods, but have something like that pushes Batman. Right. I know it's the Riddler, so try to come up with something after, you know, 100 fucking years of Batman fighting villains. Right. It's hard to come up with something cool. But, you you know, you get good writers. You can do it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do it off the top of my head, but you can get something where nobody can find out what this guy's doing and, and you figure it out. Batman, you know, he comes in. And again, that's kind of why I'm like, all right, if you're going to do multiple villains, you can have a few of them that work well together and you put their their talents together well, you know what I mean? To come up with something that makes it so that he has to be the detective to figure it out. You know, that would be cool. Um, I like the hush idea. I think plus two that you don't know how much screen time all these villains are actually going to get. When they say you're going to get the rogues gallery, it could be maybe he busts uh, Zaz in the first 10 minutes of the movie, drags his ass off to uh, Arkham, and you see like three or four of them in Arkham. Right. That'd be cool too. I want to see Arkham Asylum. Yeah. You know, like really, really good. <laughs> you know, like where you see um, kind of what they did in Suicide Squad, where you see Croc and this and that, whatever. I want to see that kind of shit. You yeah. Know? Let, let him. And he's still got to. Again, they did it perfectly in the damn game. When you're walking the Joker in and you got to walk through the, the cells or, or the row of cells with the Joker and you stop and you're waiting at the elevator and another elevator comes out and Killer Croc walks out with a couple of guards. And, you know, he's just like looking at you like he's ready to fight. Right. And Batman is just staring his ass down, ready to just whoop his ass, you know. And you know that fight's coming later in the game, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, if they go back and watch, all, like, the even just the cut scenes out of the games, they can get so much material that they can just kind of wean off of and do something with. The um, They did it really well in, they did an Arkham in, um, yeah, in the, in the Arrow, Supergirl, Flash universe on the CW. Yes. They go in and did you see that? They yeah. go in <laughs> and they're like, "There's uh, the cell is Cobblepot, comma O, right?" Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. and then there's um, there's a couple others and and like scrawled on the wall, uh, it says what's uh, blue and gray and red all over. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. stuff like like that was really well done. Yeah, um, they did a really good job of that. And you can do stuff like that. I would love for them for this whatever this is going to be for this to be the start of. A good four or five movies that don't run into camp like <laughs> the 80s ones where you right. got the Schumacher. Yeah. If you can do a series of movies that are like, if you can do a trilogy, great. I would love to see it keep going because Batman is a character that you can't keep going mm-hmm. with. I enjoyed the Nolan Dark Knight yeah. where, okay, it's realistic and that's like, well, like we said, realistically, he couldn't keep up that kind of thing, whatever. All right, now that's been done. Now show me. A comic book accurate Batman who will go, you know, for five movies. Right. And here he's fighting a handful of villains in the first one. And, oh, hang on, we can pause it. Uh, hey, Noah's here. He's going to come say goodnight to me. We'll be right back, guys. All right, I'm back. I had to say goodnight. I had to be a dad for a minute. So I was saying how I would like to see them do five movies out of this at least. I mean, just move on to that universe. Um, now, before we got into the actors, the other thing I wanted to find out from you is, to me, it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> they, do, they do the Batman. If they're going to go, okay, now it's a younger Batman. Do you think they should try to make this part of the universe? Or is it a flashback to the Ben Affleck Batman? How do you work this in? Because now... Here's the problem here, okay? You had Wonder Woman. Um, the first one would have been fine if you wanted to reboot Batman from there. Right. But Aquaman 
specifically makes reference to Justice League. Right. Now, they have... All right, back in the 80s. Michael Keaton... Michael Keaton... Yep, nope. Uh, is Val Kilmer, and now it's George Clooney. And nobody batted an eye. Right. They can do that, and I'm fine with that. The time difference is going to be kind of a, you know... Yeah. I don't, I don't know how they're going to pull that one off. So, I don't know that you even have to... I, I've read different things about a second Justice League movie. Um, so you can... I think at some point DC's going to have to make a decision. Do we... Are we going to try to do this the way Marvel did it? Or are we just going right. to punt and sort of do what we do best, which is tell stories of, of these heroes in a really cool way and, and not worry about right. trying to get them all in a in a group. Right. And, so, and make a really great Wonder Woman story. Make a really great... Batman story, make a really great Aquaman story, make a really great Superman story, mm-hmm. and 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 that be enough. Um, you got you got to make that decision. You can't you can't compete now with Marvel. Like they've just done it yeah. better than you. So so stop trying to copy it, which is why you made a, a couple of poor films yeah. trying to keep up. Do the thing that you can do really well, which is tell tell a good story. Um, yeah. Now the one thing they could do if they want to ignore the Justice League. Just sweep it under the rug like it never happened. Don't even mention it, right? In that Aquaman movie, and by the way, hey, DC, if you want anybody to write for you, I work cheap. Uh, just let me know. I can help you out. I can help you fix this shit. I'm going to give you this one for free. <laughs> <laughs> In the Aquaman movie, they don't specifically reference the Justice League. They just mention that Aquaman fought Steppenwolf. Right. Or, you know, when he defeated Steppenwolf. Leave it. Justice League never happened. Okay. Um, I don't know what you're going to do about the whole Man of Steel stuff. Whatever. Uh, if Justice League and Batman versus Superman never happened, you go Man of Steel. All right. Now give me a Man of Steel 2. Just make him happy. Whatever. Right, okay. Right. You're going to do a, a Flash movie that's been on the fence for a while. Uh, they could even use that to kind of fix some of this shit a little bit. You know, Flashpoint and shit's just altered a little bit you know they did it in the TV show and they made some changes there that stuck they can do that in the movies too Uh, or you can just ignore all that shit and just say okay that shit didn't happen just ignore that Wonder Woman Aquaman I would love to see Henry Cavill stay yeah I think he's a good Superman I do too and I think again just like Ben Affleck if you give him the right shit he'll do it you know he'll do a good job with it Um, just give me another one with him where he's happy (laughs) <laughs> a little brighter, whatever. You know, right. show me what he can do as a bright, you know, hero Superman, and go. Uh, from there, you can still do a combined universe. If you just ignore Batman vs Superman and Justice League, and you just go, okay, that mention of Steppenwolf, that was just Aquaman. Uh, you know, something he was doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can even do something with a flashback type of thing, where it's only him fighting him. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. Right. You can never touch it again because it was just mentioned. It was, yeah, when you were off fighting Steppenwolf, we were over here doing whatever. Right. That's pretty much what they said in the movie. They don't make any other reference. That's all you need. Okay, he was off doing something else. Wipe everything else out of, out of the picture. Now you give us the Batman. Batman is going to be younger. There will be some people who are confused, but if you put in the seeds, maybe like in his Batcave, you see... Again, you know, the the photo of Wonder Woman. Right. And you see, you know... Yeah, make a nod can, to it. Yeah. yeah man, man can talk to fish or, or whatever, you know. What, something weird. You know, little things here and there, you know. Uh, you can make those nods to whatever characters you do want to pull and keep, like Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Yeah. And then just keep going, you know. He can be studying rumors of Superman, you know. Right. And then you can drop Superman 2 or Man of Steel 2, whatever you're going to call it, you know. Uh, the Son of Tomorrow or whatever. Give me something. Give me yeah. something good with him. You know, I'm still waiting for that. But for the Batman, you can still massage him into this universe if you want. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, although like I, I agree with you, they do uh, the individual movies better. The overall fan base, especially because of Marvel, want to see all these ha- characters play in the same sandbox. Right. Okay. So you, but again, don't rush it. 
you've gotten some goodwill back with some of these. Shazam, I don't, I've heard rumors that they're not going to make much reference to anything else. I've heard rumors that Henry Cavill does show up as Superman to just kind of like give him a couple pointers like, hey, you know, be careful with your powers, you know, don't, whatever. Right. And that would be a nice massage into a good Superman, you know? You know? <laughs> but there are, are, there are rumors that he's out as Superman. Yes. A- and so if that happens, they're really screwed because now you've got to replace your Batman and, and you have to replace your Superman, yes. which means you have to tell the story over again. Which means yeah. you can't just drop in. You can't start Man of Steel two with a new guy. Like right. you, you have to start that over. Yeah, that especially because it's been so long. Right now, and it's, it hasn't been very long, but it's been so long now in this cluster of garbage that you've got to sort through. They're they're getting most of the weeds out of the garden. Yeah, they just got a little more pruning to do. Well, and that's why you almost like if you really lose your Batman and you really lose your Superman, you don't have a Justice League two. You just don't. No, and, no. and you shouldn't try. No, I, I wouldn't at all, period. Regardless, even if you keep Cavill and whoever is going to be Batman, don't do a Justice League 2 for the next four years. Right. And then don't call it Justice League 2. Just call it, like, Justice League of America or whatever, you know. Don't do Justice League again. Don't reference what just happened. Right. That never happened, like <laughs> I said. Justice League and Batman vs. Superman never happened yeah. in your universe, and you can still mold something that the fans are going to love. It's funny that we, as, as comic guys, have to... Um, there has to be an explanation of how it all fits together in a, in a seamless universe. Yeah. In a, yeah. In a... Well, no, that was Earth 2. No, that's Earth 27. No, that's Earth... That one. Um, it's, and you can still do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> because DC is the king... Or they are the kings of the multiple Earths. Right. You can do it. There, there are ways that they can make it work. Yeah. Right. So now we're at the Batman, and I'm praying for a good movie. For God's sake, concentrate on Batman and his rogues gallery. Yeah. Do one or two of those, and then let's build from there. Yeah. All right. So now we're at uh, Batman. So now <laughs> we know right now he should not be playing well with others. That'll come in yeah. about five years. We'll get there. We'll do a couple of Batman movies, and then we'll start to mold him. Like I said, he could be looking into little things here and there, little nods, and then he'll get further and further into that as his series goes. Yeah. All right. So for this Batman, who are you thinking? All right. Here's – let me start with – Oh, the notebook finally pops yeah, open. Yeah, here we go. Let me start with – I don't think anybody that you pick – everyone's going to have a problem with somebody in some form or fashion, right? Oh, yeah. When Ben Affleck was announced, people were like, what? What? Are you, what? That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Ben Affleck can't do this. He's old. He's fat. He's whatever. Yep. Um, you were talking about in in 89 when they did the original Batman movie, Mike, Mr. Mom's going to be Batman? What? You're, you know, yeah. like, it doesn't matter who you pick. Someone's going to have a problem with it. Yep. Um, What's he saying? You can't please all the people all the time. Right. <laughs> and all of them are listening to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you got to so you have to make a decision are you are you playing him to be you looking for the actor that is a good Bruce Wayne or are you looking for somebody that um, fills out the suit in a way that you don't have to make it either padding or armor right um, that doesn't look ridiculous as Batman right. um, so you're also trying to figure out where in his career are we? So I immediately kind of went, John Hamm would make a good Bruce Wayne. So did I. But he's f- late 30s or 40, right? I mean, Yeah, a couple of pictures I saw of him, though. How old is John Hamm? I don't have to Google it. Um, a couple of pictures I saw of him, he looked like it was out of Mad Men, but yeah. he looked younger. Um, He's one of those I'm guys sorry. that could look younger or look older, but everything I see him in tends to make him look older. Right. Um, so you're at a you're at a really good Bruce Wayne. He looks really good in a tuxedo. Um, Oof. How old did you think he was? Late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> okay, he's 47. Wow. Yeah. All right. Never mind. He can do it. Okay. <laughs> um, Son of a bitch. Now. But now. But now you make me feel like shit. But now you've got late in life Batman. Right. You don't have. Second or third year as Batman, you've got Ben. At, you're you're back at Ben Affleck. You've right. been Batman for twenty years. Well, now, all right. Now this picture, sorry, this picture of him here. 
Let's see. Okay. There it goes. Even there, he looks a little bit younger than they made Ben Affleck look in mm -hmm. Batman vs. Superman, right? But, it, but um, that guy has been Batman for, right, 10 years, maybe yeah, longer. Yeah, probably longer. Right. So you can, again, I think they were saying it's, not, it's definitely not a year one Batman. This is not going to be year one Batman from what I've heard. But read. it's not year 10 or 15 Batman. No. Right. I don't think so. If we're hitting around year 10, I can see it. Yeah. You know, he would have been my first pick as far as just, just seeing him in the suit. Right. Like, or in like the the business suit. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, I can see it. And he's top pick for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, depending on where the age is, he would be probably my top pick. I, I'd like to see him do it. Um, oh, and yeah, by the way, uh, if anything should happen to Paul and I, the first thing any of you need right. to do is come to our houses and clean our uh, browsing history. Correct. Because all it is is a bunch of uh, male celebrities, some of them shirtless, because yeah, we're I've looking a, for who's going to fill out the suit. I have a lot of Google pictures, Google searches of actors with no shirts on. I'm really start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Paul told me that at Disney, and I was like, right, okay, get to your house and break your computer. I, I am going to start getting the worst ads, <laughs> the worst pop-up <laughs> ads on when I'm on Amazon or on Facebook or whatever, yeah, it's gonna be bad. Just don't open Pornhub. Not that there's anything. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. No, it's just not my cup of tea. But yeah, that's. <laughs> um, we saw you were looking at. <laughs> uh, so I've so my next choice was um, Army Hammer mm -hmm. from Lone Ranger. He, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was my second one. Well, um, he was my third one actually. I got a couple of honorable mentions. If okay. I don't know how many you got there. I got a couple. Go ahead. Okay. Um, one, only because he, he plays the brooding really well. Um, Charlie Hunnam, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. You dye his hair black, uh, or I don't know if it's dyed blonde normally. I don't know. Everything I see him in, he's blonde. Yeah. He did that King Arthur movie that wasn't that great, but I don't. That wasn't really his fault to me. Yeah. I think he did a fine job with it. Mm -hmm. When I saw him in um, Pacific Rim, he was okay. Yeah. I loved his character in Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, uh, he's jacked enough to play it. Play yeah. it well too. Yeah, he's really built. Um, I think he's young enough to carry it for a while. I forgot. Yeah. I have to look up how old he is too. But um, I think he's young enough to carry that for like five, six movies. You know. You can go down the line with that guy for a while. Mm -hmm. So I think he could do it. Um, another one for me, depending on how the MCU goes, would be Sebastian Stan. Uh, yeah. Winter Soldier. He'd be really good at it, except that he's Winter Soldier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If if for any reason they weren't bringing him back, I don't know what his deal is right now as far as I, I'm I'm 98% sure he's locked in with Marvel for a while. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd say you can't go from one to the other, but Chris Evans was – was Johnny Storm yeah, twice? Then, yeah, twice. Twice, and, yeah. and then got to be Captain America. And then was Captain, yeah. yeah, and that was in the same damn universe, so right. you can jump to the other one. Yeah. You know. He'd be really good at it. Yeah, so I think Sebastian Stan would be really, really good at it. Yep. In fact, I might, I might have even bumped him out of the honorable mention thing. I only made him an honorable mention because he's already in Marvel. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have been up there. Uh, so, yeah, Army Hammer. I think he'd be really good. Yeah. Well, he's been in talks to play Green Lantern for since right after Ryan Reynolds got shit on. Ryan Reynolds would be on my list if he weren't already Deadpool. Green Lantern and Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know what? Where we just said Sebastian Stan could make the jump, Ryan Reynolds cannot jump from Deadpool to Batman. Yeah. He just he is Deadpool. He, there's just those certain actors that mm -hmm. are that character. You know, just like now to me, Chris Evans is Captain America. Right. You know. Uh, Rob Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. I couldn't see. Again, another guy in pretty good shape. Uh, wears a business suit really well. Yeah. If he would have shaved off the mustache and goatee or whatever, I could have seen him in that role too. Back when they right. first started Iron Man, right. you know, he could, you know. But now again, he would be more of the older Batman, whatever. But there's just yeah, certain actors that and Ryan Reynolds. Sorry, dude, <laughs> you're Deadpool and apparently Pikachu. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and again, I really can't wait to see that. It's gonna be fucking stupid. Uh, so yeah, Army Hammer. Uh, the last one I had, or sorry, I had one more honorable mention in there, and then I'll, I'll I'll let you go, and then I'm gonna throw out my last guy, and then let you finish out your list. Um, I don't know how many more you got. 
Uh, four. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, another honorable mention. I was thinking guys I hadn't really seen in too many movies. You know, I was trying to th- kind of think outside the box, and I couldn't think of anybody if they were going to do a year one. Right. Like just you're talking like younger, like twenty. Right. But someone for like a year, five or six, who's been around for just a, a little bit, fighting maybe small crime and a couple of crime lords or whatever, but not really. And now you're getting into the old, uh, you know, is Batman the reason why these villains showed up kind of thing, you know, where these guys are starting to show up. Um, Richard Madden, he played Rob Stark in Game of Thrones. Right. I think he, now, in the series, to me, he looks smaller than a lot of people, but I think that was just by comparison. If you take him out of the old medieval shit or whatever, I think he was built decently enough to... And again, yeah. half of these guys, I mean, you get them in a gym with some of the workouts oh, that these guys do, sure. they get yeah, ripped. Yeah. They get shredded, you know? So he could do that and get ripped for this. I think, to me, he was a really good actor in Game of Thrones. I'd like to see what else he could do. Can, you know, can he throw on a, an American accent and yeah. run out there? I haven't seen him in anything else. Or When I looked him up, I can't remember anything that stood out to me that I saw him in. But I liked him a lot in Game of Thrones. And the look, if you shave the beard off or, you know, just give him the five o'clock shadow kind of thing and, you know, comb his hair back, cut it shorter. He, uh, I think he, he'd do a good job with it. Plus, it would give me some redemption for not seeing enough of what he could do in Game of Thrones because, well, everybody goes away in that one. So, because I was thinking like even uh, Kit Harrington or Kit Harrington, whatever the hell the guy is who plays Jon Snow, mm-hmm. he might do it too. He, uh, he's good. You know, I could see him doing it. Uh, but I, I think I would probably do. Let me rephrase that. I'll probably take Rob, <laughs> Rob Stark over Jon Snow in that role because Kit has been in that role for a lot more. Yeah, yeah he's more well, more well recognized for Jon Snow than uh, the dude is for Rob Stark. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, he would be a good honorable mention, I think, personally. So, who else you got? Uh, talking about. I, I initially thought of him, but then I, if I thought that John Hamm was too old, um, but you're talking about how these guys get in shape. Gerard <laughs> yeah. Butler. Yeah, because I was about to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I was about to name him, too. Yeah. He, he looks the part, and he got jacked for 300. Yeah. Um, and, and that sort of, um, the way, his look, his, and then, and then the way he got jacked for 300, if he'd get jacked like that for Batman. And some of the other movies really you see good. him in, he's got the swagger, too, to yeah. kind of pull off of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You, you can see it. If he can drop the accent, uh, everything I see him in, he's got All those it. guys can. Christian, Christian Bale's yeah. real accent, I mean, he's yeah. Welsh. He's, okay. It's super thick. Yeah. I, I just, everything I see Gerard Butler in, he's got at least some kind of mm-hmm. Aussie, whatever accent. Yeah, Australian? Yeah. I think so. I think, yeah, sure. Yeah. Wherever you're from, sorry, Gerard. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be good. Um, I've got Carl Urban, uh, the McCoy in the new Star Trek movies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Dr. Dre- uh, Judge Dredd. Dr. Dredd. Holy shit. Dr. Dredd. Oh, is he going to be Judge Dredd? He was. Really? Yeah. I didn't see it. In the last Dredd movie? Didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Big surprise. Yeah. He would be good. Um, and then I've got... I've got um, so, I saw, a couple, I saw a couple names, and I was like, who is that? The, uh, Tyler Heck, Hecken? Hetchen? Um, sure. he is He is the Superman on Supergirl. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can see it. Okay, and my when they introduced him as Superman, again, so you'd have to cross over from being right Superman to Batman, but but you're sort of TV Superman. Um, he as Superman isn't very jacked. He's kind of a thinner guy. Yeah, he is by no means Henry Cavill, right, in terms of his build. Right. Um, but when you are the Superman in the Supergirl movie, you are not going to and Supergirls. By and large, the the star of that, not by and large, but but largely the star of that, and and the Superman is, yeah, oh, uh, I threw him off. Yeah, <laughs> showed me Carl Urban as Judge Dredd. Uh-huh. Um, I just want to be right. They get they get a they got a slighter of build Superman so that he doesn't far outshine Supergirl. Right, because right. you yeah. would, because and I get that in in comparison, she wouldn't be as powerful. 
Um, but he looks the part of a Bruce Wayne. Um, he'd have to put on a little bit of size, I think, to be Batman, but not a ton. No, no. And again, and there's another thing, too. Like, when you want somebody for that build, you automatically go to, like, athletes, mm -hmm. right? But, again, you know, Heather was joking around because she said um, she can get behind uh, Army Hammer or John Ham, whatever. But um, she was laughing. She was like, you know, if ethnicity isn't a problem, can't we just have Dwayne Johnson do everything? Right, right. I'm like, well, no, because he's already going to play Black Adam. So, you, you know. But, you know, we'll go on to that tangent here in yeah. a bit. But, like, he's the first one you think of. John Cena. Why not? You know what? He is growing his hair out, too. Holy shit. You know what? Maybe he's making a play for it. Because uh, he's getting better in the movies I see him in. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say he's not up to Dwayne Johnson level, but then again, I didn't expect... Dwayne Johnson to be at that Correct. level at all, ever, and he's just there. Cena's getting better. Um, I'd give him a shot at it. Uh, it. I think the right director, and maybe Reeves is the right director, could pull it out of him. Mm -hmm. He does that. All right, you know when he does like the military stuff or whatever, he, and that not stiff but um, stoic, I guess. Yeah, uh, stoic, Sto stoic, stoic, stoic. <laughs> stoic. He's stoic. That's my new word. Stoic. stoic. He's stoic. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, stoic, that just that hard, tough as nails kind right. of nature, you know, where stern. Yeah. There, there it is. <laughs> that was the word that popped in there. He could pull if, that off. If you told me we were recasting Captain America, he's my first. He's my first choice. And I, I heard rumor that people were asking for him to come back. If um, Chris Evans was done, they wanted him to come in and play Cap. He's my first. Like, yeah, he's my he, first choice. He would be my first choice. Yeah. The build yeah. is just Cap. Correct. But I think he could pull off that And that square-jawed sort of... Yeah. And that's the yeah. thing for me with the cowl. I think it, you know, once you put the cowl on him, you can kind of see it. Yeah. You know? uh, I don't know what other... I always lean more toward the wrestlers because, I mean, any other sizable guy would be like a football player or whatever, mm -hmm. but can they act? That, that's the biggest thing. Right. Can they act? And not many of the wrestlers really, I don't... I mean, while well, they are they, acting. They, they act in the ring all the time, yeah. Can they act in a movie? Right. And then they've proven time and again that they can't. Right. But there are maybe a couple of them here and there that I, I think would be decent. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'll throw some on Facebook or whatever when I think of them. But I think maybe Cena could pull it off, I think. But I think I'd rather see him like as a captain. Yeah, he's, first. he'd be great as Cap. Yeah. Um, uh, so I've got, I've got Carl. Then I've got Zac Efron. Yeah, I thought of him too. Because what... He was just in Baywatch, High School Musical. Yeah, okay. Of other Wait, cause who's the one playing Shazam? That's um, Zach Levi. Zach Levi. See, that's why I keep screwing them all up. Yeah, because I'm old and out of touch. Right. All right. So then, yes, you know what? Zach Efron. Damn. If you're gonna do a year, two or three, like the first signs of like Riddler or whatever. Yep. Yeah, he could. Yeah, that would be really good. Yeah, uh, I think he just nailed it. I think he just took took it away. And uh, and then my final guy is um, Tyler Lautner from Twilight, the werewolf in Twilight. Yeah. Okay. I thought of him too. Yeah. I, th I think he. Would I read be good. something about um, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> I was about to say, speaking of Twilight, and I was like, it can't be. It can't be. It now. Can't be him. It can't be shiny vampires. It can be That's weird. the first thing I said. It can be weird werewolves, but it can't be shiny vampires. That's a, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the line that we're going to cross? Yeah, that's okay. it. All right, that's the one we're drawing. <laughs> no shiny. Stop sparkling, damn right. it. We don't need a sparkly Batman. He's just, he reminds me, like, if I were trying to cast somebody to play um, Robin Smith of The Cure, like, I'd take Robert Pattinson. I'd take, yeah. you know, like a, or, or Morrissey or somebody, you know, of that, of that sort of vein. Like, I don't see... Robert Pattinson being kind of action hero -y. I don't either. Seeing brooding sort of I see angsty. the brooding, which now, again, the brooding would be okay for Batman, but there's a lot more to it than just brooding. Yeah. Um, now, I guess, again, I cannot think of one thing I've seen any of the three of them in except for uh, Lautner in the Grown Ups sequel. He was one of the uh, college kids. Right. And that was freaking hilarious. Uh, that was He was great in that. Um, other than that, I can't remember seeing any of the three of them, Kristen Stewart, whatever, uh, from Twilight, 
in anything else. And I know there's been a few things. She, no, she's she was in, in something. She's in Zombieland, isn't she? No. No? No. Who's the, who's the, who's the, who's the girl in Zombieland? Emma Stone. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> different young she's girl. She's in something. But, you know, Kristen Stewart was in something with James Gandolfini that I, I vaguely remember seeing her in. I mean, and again, she, you know, hey, I'll, I'll watch her in something, but she's in another one that, like, you only get one look out of her, you know? Right, right. <laughs> like, she was that meme. It was, like, this, the different emotions of Kristen Stewart. It yep. was on the same face, you know? But outside of that, though, I mean, you know, she's cute. Serviceable. I'll watch her in a movie just because she's cute. But that's about it. I, I, there's nothing like, you know, I can't think of anything I've seen her in or Robert Patterson. Pat Pattinson, sorry. But the few articles that I have read, while there are many people that are like us, were like, really? There are so many other better suited actors for this role. Yeah. One article I did read said um, that he's done enough since Twilight to justify seeing, seeing him make a shot of this role. I'm like, well, I, I guess if I go watch some other stuff and kind of get a better formed opinion on him. So I wouldn't, he's the one for me where I would be like, all right, if enough people are behind him and it's not mostly twilight fans, <laughs> that's, that's the key there. It's not all twilight fans going, we want Robert. Right. Um, <laughs> team Batman. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so, uh, well, never mind. I was talking myself out of it. <laughs> Right, I don't oh, want to sit on. I don't want to pick. I don't have to pick the side of my my theater that I'm that I'm team him or team Jacob. Oh God! So anyway, uh, there's enough written right now to make me be like, okay, I'll I'll throw him in the Michael Keaton Ben Affleck camp. Like most people are complaining about it, yeah. So I'll I'll hold out judgment if he does if he does get selected. I'll hold out judgment until I see something. Right. Just because I don't know enough about what he's done outside of Twilight, because again, that was so big for me that you can. But I don't want to hold that against him. You know what I mean? Right. So I mean, I do because because <laughs> I'm me. But <laughs> outside of being me and being an asshole, I'll wait and I'll see what happens with that one. But there are so many more here that I want to see. The last guy I got outside of talking about Robert Pattinson um, is Liam Hemsworth. I've seen him in a couple of things. Yeah. His brother's Thor. I mean, he's got the build. You know, I think he could pull it off. And worst case scenario, if you got a recast uh, Harley Quinn, his wife could jump in. Right, right. Because <laughs> she's already fucking out she there. She's in that, yeah. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I would. I think he, he'd be like my second pick. I think... Um, you talked me into Zac Efron. I think I like that one the most, really, if they're going to go early. If they're going to go early, I'll, I'll, I like the Zac Efron thing. He's got the build. I, he's got abs where he shouldn't have abs. He's got It's stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, the dude's got the build. Um, he's got comedy chops, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember anything else I've seen him in that. I feel like comic fans will hold the whole high school musical thing against him. Yeah. Um, and they shouldn't. Uh, but I think he'd be good at it. I think he'd be good. I think he's a good enough actor. He's been in enough shit now. Again, like I said. What I, had I've Henry seen... Cavill done before before Man of Steel? I don't know. I don't either. I don't even know who he was before I, Man of Steel. I don't think Steel, I did either. And, and, I, and I bring that up to say that it could be some unknown person yeah. because the role itself is big enough that that you'll see it because it's a Batman movie and it doesn't sort of matter who it is. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're going to go like they're talking the detective route, if you get someone who can pull off they they have to first pull off the fact that Bruce Wayne is the mask. Right. Yeah, if they can make you believe that Bruce Wayne is the mask and Batman is who he really is. So mm -hmm. even like, and it would be subtle, you know, it'd be little, little things where he's got to be Bruce Wayne to keep up appearances. Correct. Right. But you can even see him maybe like while he's taking a drink, still kind of calculating, taking in the room. You, yep. you know what I mean? Being that, 
okay, yeah, he's it's Bruce Wayne. He's the rich guy that's throwing a party, or, or he's showing up and he's writing a check to donate or whatever. Yeah, and he doesn't have to be the falling into the fountain, um, Christian Bale one. You know, right, which I mean was good. Yeah, uh, yeah. that that hit the nail on the head there because that's not really who he is. You know, you don't have to be that over top over the top with it, right? But uh, if they can do it, where you got a guy that can play that role just subtle enough to make it believable, like, okay, yeah, he's using that as a cover, mm-hmm. and then Batman is who he really is, and then the physical aspect of it, he's got to be able to fight. Right. Got to make that look believable. Yep. Which, in the little time you saw him, like, at the end of Batman vs. Superman, Ben Affleck had me hooked. And that, that one scene when he goes after Martha... But when he goes after those guys, mm-hmm. I was like, "That's Batman yeah. coming up from the fucking, the floor beneath them, yeah. and you know, in and out." That was awesome. Do that kind of shit. You yeah. get a guy that can move like that, and I think Zac Efron could probably move like that. And well, I mean, camera tricks, you know, whatever. But you get some people that can move and make it look like they are pretty much the smartest guy in the room, right? You know, as far as like he's calculating, he's always yep. thinking. And you can tell a good enough story that puts that part to the test. The the definitive Batman hasn't been made yet. You have not had any right. one of these movies right. have not encompassed everything that he is. Yep. But I think this is the time you have to do it. The Christian Bale leaves out the detective parts. It leaves out the... Um, you know, they touch on it with the bullet thing when he's trying to... Remember the gunshot with the bricks? He, yeah. He's firing... So they touch on the but, but they don't go through forensics, the, whatever. Yeah, but they don't go through the sort of all of the training and all the stuff, right? right. He goes to the monastery, right, with the League of Shadows and all that stuff. Sure. But yeah. but it it doesn't go into the the way the comics does of like he's mastered every form of martial arts. He right. speaks two dozen languages. He's got mm-hmm. a nearly photographic memory. Like they they sort of go past most of that. Yeah, and I know that's. Of course, again, it's difficult to do in a movie, you know, but you, there are those little touches that mm-hmm. you can do, uh, you know. You don't have to have degrees on the wall and everything because he wouldn't display them. It's not, it's not who he is. Right. Again, Bruce Wayne is just a farce. But you can have stuff like maybe um, when he's in the Batcave, he's got multiple screens up and one of them's in Mandarin, one of the, you know, because he's reading right. different, you know, he's trying yeah. to track somebody and yeah. he's, you know, that kind of shit. You can do that kind of stuff where, and that you can have a translation on the, you know, closed caption, whatever, yeah. if you need it to really. But if you're going to do the training, if you're going to do the training montage scenes, then you do, you know, he goes to some, some, you know, island and, and studies mm-hmm. a, uh, you know, an ancient Okinawan martial arts with this little master and then, goes to you know brazil and learns capoeira and then is in france learning savat and then in russia learning krav maga like right uh, yeah. all of the different ways you can do those different fighting styles with different masters and and yeah. tra- like just do them and it would be easy you could uh, it would almost be like one of those 80s where you see the plane going yeah, from one place exactly. to another right but every time you see him he looks either a little bit older or mm-hmm. like, you know, his hair is longer. Yep. You, you know what I mean? You can kind of do that kind of thing to show a progression of time. Yep. It's not just like he's hopping from place to place. And, right, right, right. I'm a black belt in five minutes. You can show a progression of time. Yeah. And you know, maybe even in the very beginning, he could be skinnier. You don't have to do it as drastic as they did in Captain America, but you can use CGI to make him look skinnier. Yep. You know, say, all right, take Efron. We're, I'm sold on Efron now. Take his ass. He's already like, he's buff, and you're gonna build him up a little bit more for the suit. Either film some shit right now where he's skinnier before he gets bulked up, or CGI him a little bit where he's skinnier, starting to learn some of the shit, mm-hmm. and then show him bigger. Yeah. At the end of the whole training montage thing, if that's what, if that's the route you want to take. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to do it, but if you're going to try to breeze past the whole, I mean, the first five minutes of that movie, t- I'll even give you a ten. Ten minutes. If you're gonna do a two and a half hour movie, you could do ten minutes of the gunshot, the pearls hitting the ground. Yep. You know, and then just boom, 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 boom. Yep. You know, Alfred taking him. Whoever's gonna play Alfred? Oh, we gotta to touch on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll think about that one next time. We'll, we'll look at who's He's, gonna play. 
as we get further along, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do another Batman one where we're going to look at some of the other characters and who we really want to see when we flesh out this movie for you guys. <laughs> and I'm telling you, oh, I'm going to quit my job and start writing movies. But, um, yeah, I think... Yeah, he sleeps on the floor of some place in Thailand where he lear- while he learns, you know, yeah. Thai, you know, uh, Muay Thai. Yeah, for the first 10 to 15 minutes is that entire yep. sequence... And it ends with him coming back to Wayne Manor. Yeah. And, okay, you know, he's been gone for years or whatever. They open up Wayne Manor and blah, blah, blah. They do all that shit, you know. And then just move on to um, five years later. Yeah. Or, or if you don't want to do year one Batman, you can do, okay, all this. Mm-hmm. You can see him starting uh, the Batcave, you know, like starting to – yeah. Get, the get stuff, stuff down yeah. there, which they never, they've never done that. That would be kind of funny. You, right. know? you just see him How and you Alfred with a pallet jack <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> coming down the elevator. All right, got to set this shit up. Yeah, whatever. Plug in the monitors. Yeah. yeah. Get all the monitors together. So yeah. Make sure it's shaped like a bat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. The monitors don't got to be a bat, but we yeah. got to do the bat thing around it. How yeah. are we going to make sure that the bat shit from, uh, from these 10,000 bats doesn't get in the... <laughs> You know, in our drives and in our USB ports. Yeah, yeah. It's all, oh, yeah, all, oh, yeah, please. So now and that would be the comedy, you know. But no, nah, you don't have to touch on that. We're kidding. Uh, yeah, I would love to see them just first starting up the Batcave and then they just say, okay, it's two years later. Yeah. And he's been out there nonstop for two years and you're starting to, it jumps right back into, okay, the cave. Mm-hmm. And he's pulling back into the Batmobile, you know. So now you've set up the bat the bat cave. Yep. Two years later, and you see the Batmobile pulling into the bat cave. Right. You know? It's got all the stuff. Damn it! I'm writing this whole fucking movie for you people. <laughs> it's all established, right? And he gets in there, you know, computer or whatever, and it opens up, and you can see. You can even see the right there. You'll see like the picture of Wonder Woman or the the news article about Flash or whoever you're gonna keep this thing involved with, yeah. right? You you can have all that shit plus. Uh, crocodile loose in the sewer. You right. know, kind of, you know right, little yeah. things like that. You can start to touch on that and set it up for, again, like you're not going to do a whole movie about Killer Croc, but that son of a bitch can show up in like Batman 3 mm-hmm. for like the first, uh, he could be the muscle for somebody. Yeah. You know, or he could just be some nut, <laughs> some right. crazy sh- Killer Croc in the sewers yeah. that Batman's like, oh, wait, no, nobody else can deal with this. Because the cops are getting killed every time they go looking for this thing. Yep. And he goes and takes it down, you know. Whatever. You can touch on, touch on that kind of stuff. But then I want to see, by the end of this thing, I want to see them opening Arkham Asylum because of the n- new villains that are showing up, yep. you know. By the end of that thing, because then Arkham Asylum should be a character within these movies itself. And you should have that going back and forth. Yep, I agree. And you can bring in Robin later. We can touch on that one. We'll figure out what kid we want to ruins right. <laughs> ruin right. his life. Right. Uh, uh, no, one of the kids from It. Oh shit! The kid who plays Eddie. There you go. The kid who plays Eddie, and he plays the. Uh, no, damn it! Because he's already in the universe. He plays the the uh, foster brother to Shazam. Shit, oh, never gotcha. mind. Yeah, yeah. All right, one of the other kids. See, there we go. Now we're all fucked up. All right, so that was Batman. Now that's awesome. A, uh, I hope they make it. Like this. <laughs> See? <laughs> I'm telling you, I can write this whole damn thing. Um, as a, an afterthought, since we were talking about um, who we wanted to play Batman, uh, before we check out of here, one thought that would be uh, a dream of mine, it would, just, it would be hilarious if they could do it. And I, you reminded me when you were on your phone and I saw one of the pictures popped up. So you had Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. Right. If you found a 16, 17 year old kid, whatever, you know, I forget how old Terry McGinnis is in the comic and in the cartoon. High school. But uh, yeah, he's in high school. You find somebody similar to your Tom Holland. Right. And it would pretty much have to be almost exactly Tom Holland because what we've said it before the Batman Beyond was a combination of Batman and Spider Man because of the suit and the agility and whatever. He was a little bit different. You know? Right. You find a kid to play him, and then, you know, so the kid, you know, the kid, he finds the, the old 
decrepit mansion, whatever, right? Yep. And he breaks in or whatever. He's running from those the, the gang or whatever the hell happens. And he gets in there, and the dog, just right out of the, co- the cartoon, right? right? The dog can come save his ass, and then he's on his ass. The dog is over him, and you hear, you know, heal. And you look up, and it's fucking Michael Keaton. It's Robert De Niro. <laughs> oh, no, Michael, <laughs> Michael Keaton, because he was Batman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Robert De Niro would be really Robert good. De Niro would be Robert awesome. Robert De Niro would look just like the cartoon. Yep. But if, if you give me Michael Keaton, yeah. the way he looks like now, done. Yeah. <laughs> the way like, he looked as the dad in Homecoming? Yes. Yeah. He has the vulture? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> just like that. And he's just standing there with a cane. Yeah. Heel. <laughs> he would, you'd, you'd lose your shit. You would have you'd lose your so mess. many people lose their shit. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. you make a series of Batman Beyond movies? Done. Yeah. See? But also, but a good casting there would also be De Niro. Oh, yeah. No, De Niro would be great. If he could stop screaming about politics for five minutes, it'd be yep. great. Uh, <laughs> love you. Love you, Bobby. Mm-hmm. You're good. Uh, so, yeah. So that brings this one to a wrap. This one lasts a lot awesome. longer than we thought. Right. But it was cool. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We're, wow. we're almost an hour longer than I thought we were going to yeah, be. We were. But, hey, you know what? We're about average for us. Good talk. Yeah, no, I had a good time. Um, so let us know what you guys think as far as these uh, big game trailers. That's all right. Tell us uh, your favorite uh, commercial. Tell us your favorite trailer. Uh, and then tell us who you think should be Batman. Yeah. Feel free to throw us a um, corresponding story to our Florida Man stories yeah, you from your hometown. Correct. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. Although, wherever <laughs> you live, your people are not as crazy as ours. So No, no good we, we got you beat. Uh, that'll be it so hit us up on uh, Facebook at what if geeks and uh, email yep what if geeks at gmail.com yep and uh, I'm actually going to start to remember to throw stuff on Instagram and Twitter <laughs> I've been really bad about that but I'm going to get on there this week and do all that shit all right so there you go guys hit us up and we'll talk to you soon see you later <laughs>